Hey everybody and welcome to Zero Calvin. Today I have a cool video for you. I'm going to be taking a 3D scan of my face and using the Headshot 2.0 plugin for Character Creator 4. I will be creating a digital double of myself like this. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, let's get started. So the first step in this process is to get a good 3D scan of my face, right? Um, one of the easiest ways I can think of doing it is to use polycam. So I'm here in my bathroom, I'm going to use the aid of my mirror and the relatively even lighting in the bathroom uh, to get a 3D scan of my face. So I'm going to use an app called Polycam. Uh, polycam is um, it's really a pretty good uh, photogrammetry 3D scanning uh, program that uh, will work both with your phone and also uh, in, on the web. Um, it is a paid service, but there is, they're pretty um, giving for their trial, so you can definitely do this on a trial period um, and see if you like it. But anyway, I'm going to do a start a scan here, and all it does is it just um, it goes uses a video, right? So I'm just going to shoot a video, and it will take a number of still images captures off of the, uh, the video as I go along and then upload that to the service and create the face. Now, I don't have to go all the way around my head because the uh, Headshot 2 plugin will actually work with just a partial scan, which is good for us. So what I'm actually gonna do is turn this around like this, and that, that's the reason I'm using the mirror here, is because I can see what the camera is, is um, recording while I'm scanning here, right? Um, you could do it in selfie mode, I suppose, but the camera on the back side is um, always better. So I'm just going to I'm going to go stop talking, look forward, neutral expression, try not to move much, and then do all the scanning and just try to get um, a bunch of shots from all angles, right? Okay, here I go. Okay, so now it looks like this. We've got a bunch of stills. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to, I'm going to pick a full for the detail. Uh, we don't need object masking because we, um, we didn't move ourselves with respect to the environment, hopefully. I'm actually going to click on the images, okay? And I can scroll through and I can delete any of the images that I don't like. So if it caught me blinking or if um, at the very end when I, you know, broke ranks and to, to shut the thing off. So I'm going to just look through this real quick. Okay, there's three images at the end here that I need to delete. Other than that, I think they all look okay. So I'm going to go back. And then make sure full is selected and then upload and process. I'll see you back at the desktop now. So here we are on the Polycam website and as you can see the processing has finished and it looks like it did a good job. So we can click on this and we can check it out. Um, so it does look like it did quite a good job. A little bit creepy to me to see that but uh, I'm going to actually click on edit and just kind of uh, work on the, or the rotation of this a little bit and try to rotate it um, so that it's just facing the correct way here. So while we're here, we might as well accurately scale the model. Uh, so it's not, this isn't fully necessary, but we might as well do it. Um, I'm gonna click on edit. I'm gonna click on rescale. I'm gonna click on metric. I'm going to, uh, Go between my two eyes here, and I know that should be uh, 5.9 centimeters. And we'll apply, and there we go. So if we're happy with our results, we can export out the mesh now. I believe if you're just doing the trial, it's only going to export out the GLTF. Um, if that's the case, you'll have to then import that into Blender and then export out the uh, texture and the mesh 
from Blender, you know, the mesh is like an OBJ and then extract out the texture files. So that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, if you sign up for the service, you can export out and say OBJ, which is what I want. Once you've downloaded the zip, you'll want to extract it. And you'll get something like this. So it looks like the texture is only 4K, which is passable for us. But if you wanted something more high definition, uh, you may have to use another service. We can double click our OBJ file just to make sure it's uh, extracted OK. And yeah, it looks OK to me, so that's good. That means we can actually go to Character Creator and start this process. Now Headshot, Headshot 2 has the same image processing feature that it did in Headshot 1, but now we have this cool mesh processing feature. And as you can see, it will accept a whole head, a partially covered head, like with hair or a hat, a, um, a partial scan, which is what we have, or a full body scan. Now it doesn't mean, even though it does say full body, this does not, um, do a full body scan to a full character. Unfortunately, it still will only use the head to, you know, uh, create the head of your model. And the model will be, um, you know, a fake. The, the body will be a fake. But anyway, it's still cool for now. So let's start the head generation process. And it's gonna yell at us and say, okay, yeah, well, you need a freaking model to do that with. So that makes sense. So let's import one. So I'm going to go to import. Import and select our OBJ file. Now the OBJ file, it seems to come in as this tiny little dot down here. And um, we're not really quite sure of the scaling and the positioning and everything. So what you'll want to do is click on nothing, click on load neutral base, and load in your neutral base. Um, now we can go back to the scene and pick our polyprop. It's this tiny thing down here, so obviously we need to make it bigger. I'm gonna lock the scaling and start adding zeros. It looks like I had, have to add two zeros to that. I'm now going to move it up into position and just orientate it about the same as our model. Once you've done that, I'm going to actually click on Reset Transform, which is basically tells it that this should be the zero um, position of the rotation and everything. I don't think that's strictly necessary, but it's a good thing to do. We can now delete our neutral base. The other thing we might want to do is uh, check out the materials on this guy because they're only going to be um, probably just the diffuse channel that came in through the OBJ. So what we can do is go back to our materials here and drag and drop them into the correct channels. So let's just make sure it has the, the full resolution diffuse. I'm going to drag this into the roughness and I'm going to drag this into the normal or what this calls bump, but we're going to tell it it's a normal map and that should be good. Now, if you're on the, um, the freebie thing, I think you're probably only going to get the diffuse uh, map anyway, so that's fine. So you want your head filling up the screen and directly facing the camera. And then you can go back to the Headshot plugin and start head generation. The software will detect the head and place it in the same orientation as a, um, a stock head. And what we have to do is do alignment points. So we're basically teaching it um, reference points that refer to the stock topography versus our scanned face. You can choose between a number of points, uh, 24, 32, 35. The more points you choose, uh, typically the better it will go. You can also add more um, points afterwards, um, but these are kind of like the stock ones that it would like to use. 
people who have used R3DS wrap will be very familiar with this style here. Um, so 35 is going to be too much for us because it's going to want to do like the back of the head. We don't have a back of our head, so we wouldn't want that. We could go back to 30. Um, even 32 is too much. So just the basic 24 is probably fine. Um, and we can add some more to get our ears if we want to do that um, afterwards. So that's fine. We'll just do start with the basic 24. Uh, we can be lazy and do auto detect and it'll automatically try to place as many of these points as it can. Um, and then we can just move them a better into position. So I'm just going to double check these points here. So number one, the eyebrow starting way too far over. I'm not sure if this is, I feel like this should be the center of the eyebrows. I'm not sure if that's true or not. We didn't get the best scan of our eyebrows, did we? Um, looking at our eyes. And again, you're just going to use this as the reference to where they should go. All right, it looks like the basic 24 points are in position now. I just want to add a few more. Um, usually you want to do the bottom of the lips too, or the inside of the lips rather, and then some points on the ears. We may not end up using the, the uh, texture from the ears because they look kind of funky, but um, for the wrapping for now, We'll just do that. All right, that should be good enough. So let's click on head gen to generate our head. So this will actually wrap this figure around our scan conform it to it, and transfer the textures over to it. So it basically makes our standard CC3 plus topography uh, shaped like our scan. And this is what we end up with, which is pretty cool. So it looks like it's actually done quite a good job of it. Um, the face, the shape looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's created a, a back of our head for us. So that looks pretty good. We'll be able to refine the, the shape and the mapping in a minute. Um, but what you want to do is right now uh, determine how much of this shape you want to use. Um, we're actually going to just leave it as is. So um, everything, the neck and everything I think is good. If um, a lot of this was distorted and bad, you can just pick a, like say, a, a, just, um, just the face to use or just, um, the, just more of the face to use and the ears. Uh, for us, I think we're gonna use the full head though. Now we can refine the mesh. So this will let us uh, slightly adjust the wrap. So where things usually don't quite match up, uh, usually are around the eyes and the mouth. So we're just going to check that. What you can do, zoom in on the eyes, and you can play with the uh, mesh opacity here and go back and forth and check one versus the other. So as you can see, the eyes, looks like the top of the eyes did pretty good. The bottom, though, uh, this point here isn't quite lining up. So we can click on move, and we actually want to move the edges here. So we want to uh, deselect keep borders because uh, we don't want to keep these borders still. I'm going to make this radius much smaller, and I'm just going to kind of tuck this guy into shape here. 
and you can go back and forth with the opacity and just double check that you got that correct. So that's probably a bit better. So let's bounce over to the other eye and see how we're doing with that. That one actually seemed to have done quite well. Let's just look at the mouth now too. Surprisingly, it did the mouth quite well too. So it's showing you that the edges of the lips and everything. So that's, I think we're gonna call that good. My scanned texture messed up a little bit with, well, uh, we can always fix textures and stuff like that later on. So I'm not too worried about that. So that's good, but you can do all kinds of things at this point if you needed to fix things. You can smooth, um, you can read the directions on it. You can, you can clone and project shapes in case things didn't quite fill out right with your, um, versus your profile. You can use the project uh, brush to kind of uh, cling it better to what we've done. Like say here, it looks like the nose didn't quite fill out enough, so we can use the project tool to fix that if we wanted to. I'm actually gonna undo that and leave it B. And you can see like, say with the head, my scan was lumpier, um, but it's actually smoothing it over and that's probably for the best. So I'm gonna leave that. I think that's good. I'm okay with this. At this point, we also have the option to uh, keep our neck shape and keep our head size. Um, by default, It'll keep the neck shape and it'll resize the head automatically to be to make sense with a CC3 plus body. Um, if you're doing a really weird caricature or something, you may want you may um, not want to keep the head the neck or or keep it or you may want to keep the head size. Like if the head was supposed to be a lot bigger than the body or a lot smaller. You may want to keep the head size and that way it doesn't automatically rescale it to make sense for a normal human being. Um, so I'm going to leave the defaults here and I'm going to now attach this to a body. So it's going to ask me what kind of body I want it. So we're going to leave male. Uh, what kind of texture mask do we want? So this is basically saying how much of the texture do we want to pull off of this of our scan. Um, since we didn't do a full head, um, I'm going to just do this one probably where we're going to do the face, the ears, and the neck. Um, depending on how well your scan turned out, you may want to restrict it even more and not use the ears or less and less of the face. But I'm going to try type 1. We can always uh, redo this again if we want. So now we're saying where do we want to get the diffuse texture from? And we're going to say from the source mesh. Um, so it'll just, it'll bring it off of our scan. Um, we could also pull it off of a separate high poly mesh that lines up with our scan. Or we can reproject it from an image if we want to. So something similar to the original headshot or leave it textureless and we can just, um, you know, paint it in later. So we'll leave that be. Um, now this is the source of the normal map. So the normal map is the, um, so the normal map is like a, like think of it as a high tech bump map. It is that bluish purplish map that you always see. So it's basically a map that overlays on a simple mesh to give it that, that finer detailed bumpiness, right? Um, so I'm going to pull that right from our source mesh uh, and leave that be. Sometimes with 3D scans though, you may have a lower resolution version that you may want to use for wrapping and then a high poly mesh that you may want to use to pull those uh, very fine details from and then bake them into the normal map. So if you had a high poly mesh here, you could reference it I uh, tried this once and it didn't quite work out for me. But I think that's because when I imported my uh, low poly, I had then moved it. And then when you're referencing a high poly, 
um, it should be in the same position, but since you don't have the opportunity to move it in the same position in Character Creator, um, there was a discrepancy between the positions and it didn't really work out for me. So I think if you want to use this workflow, you uh, can't move the low poly in, in Character Creator. You're just going to have to move, move the camera into position to look directly into the, the head and that will be that. But for us, I'm just going to leave it as Source Mesh. I want um, a high texture. I think 4K is fine, being that my original um, diffuse map was only 4K. Um, you do have the opportunity to do an 8K texture map set here, though. And now we will click Generate and see what happens. So after a couple of minutes, it looks like it's done. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to um, make my original scan invisible. And we'll see how it goes. Well, it definitely got my body correct because I'm definitely ripped like that. The face looks pretty good, but it matched up. I mean, so the scan looks good, but uh, you know, the texture blending, I have to say, isn't the best here. Yeah, I'd have to say that's really bad. And for some reason, it seemed to have used um, more of my face than I really wanted it to. I used my whole neck here, including the textures that it guessed at, at the back. So that doesn't really work out very well for me. Um, so I'm actually going to go and do this again. Go back to attach to body. And I'm going to pick type two and try this again. All right, so I'm gonna actually just drag this over to a different window for now. And we'll see what this looks like now. So this uh, looks better-ish. I mean, uh, we don't have the weird next textures. It did not really pick a good um, <laughs> color for my skin to match in there. Uh, I'm going to change this to uh, subdivided so we don't have the, it's a little more rounded. Um, I mean, the face scan, the texture transfer looks really pretty good. Um, it just didn't really blend in a body. It didn't pick a very good body color um, to blend in with my face. So that's something I've noticed before um, with other experiments I've done with this. It's just, I mean, you know. <laughs> You couldn't use that, I don't think. That just looks like not good. Uh, but we will see if we can fix that. So theoretically here, we should be able to change skin types and things like that. So here's where we can change the skin color. We can also choose different masks. We're gonna leave it on no mask for now. Um, just as an experiment, we may have to mask out or we may have to use different masks to get a better result. But I do want to base, get my skin color uh, mixed in skin color better. So we're going to click on this and I wonder if we could pick a screen color. Maybe we could pick kind of like something like this. So with some trial and error, um, I got it to look okay on this side. The problem is now it doesn't match on this side. And this was probably my fault in my scan. Um, what we have is two different color temperatures from one side of my face to the other, unfortunately. I'm not entirely sure the, how that happened. It might have been reflections off of... Um, there's a window in my bathroom on this side. So maybe I was getting in some daylight off of this side and this was the, the lamp light. So this is kind of a problem. So what we could do is go back to the photo diffuse texture. Oh God, that looks scary. And uh, launch that into a, a photo editor and try to do some color correction. Or we could just rescan and try this whole thing again with better, more even lighting. I think for now I'm going to try to edit it in a photo editor. So you can clearly see here that one side of my face is uh, colder than the other. 
God, this is just nightmare fuel. I think what I'm going to do is I'm making a copy. I'm going to change one. I'm going to then um, adjust the color temperature of this one so that this side of the face would be about where this one is. And then I will um, basically delete. I will try to like remove one side and leave the other. You'll see. So now the theoretically I should be able to use the eraser brush and erase this to expose this. So this is warmer. So I basically want to just kind of erase, slightly erase some of this and mix in the warmer side, perhaps, maybe. All right, I guess that's pretty close. It's better than it was, right? Um, so now, I mean, this side is still darker than this. I mean, I guess I could try to darken the same places a little bit. So let's do that. Um, okay, so now we've fixed it. Now the color temperature and the shadow and everything kind of matches both sides a lot better. Um, so we will now save this. It'll merge it back and it should then update this guy, which it looks like it did. So let's click on update skin texture and see if that, uh, that should re-project it here. So now it's at least even. Although I do feel that this is very tan and very saturated. Uh, so I do want to uh, fix that as well. But I think we can do that without the aid of our external program. We can actually just modify it here. Uh, so we should be able to click on it and do adjust color. And we can do it, this part of it right inside of Character Creator. Um, so we want less saturation, I, th I feel. That's not too bad. Honestly, I kind of want to get rid of these, the darkness on both sides here. Uh, so I'm going to fix that up real quick and come back. And I'm basically using the same method as before, where I have a lighter version underneath, and I'm going to use the eraser brush to expose it. So I'm going to do like before, where I have a lighter version underneath, and I'm using the eraser brush to expose it. The basic premise here is that your, um, your diffuse map is really meant to uh, convey color information, um, not shadow information. So it needs to look as, um, as uniform as possible as far as um, light and shadow. And you just want it to just be a, a palette of different colors. So that's what I'm kind of doing here is kind of softening up the the shadows on, that were in, on the sides of my face because my light source was directly in front of us. So the sides of my face were more in shadow, unfortunately. So that's kind of what I'm correcting now. So I think that's probably pretty good. So let's reproject. So let's update that skin texture and see where we're at. So honestly, that's probably pretty good. It's a lot more even now. Um, so we should be able to blend it in with our surrounding skin a little better. Um, there is this weird artifact here, and I think if we look at the normal map, there's an irregularity there. So I, I think it's probably caused by the normal map. So I'm going to try to fix that now too. Hmm. That's good enough for now. There are still some problems with the, um, with the texture, but when, once we're fully done with the character, then I will um, worry about that a little later. Let's worry about trying to match my skin tone now. So let's go back up here to the skin color. So needless to say, I think their uh, skin blending algorithm could use a lot of work. Number one, it's just one bland color of skin, right? Uh, 
and it just it just it's just not working for me the human face is full of all kinds of random colors and to try to match that up with a relatively solid color just is not happening you know so I guess we can play with some of the skin settings. Um, it is set to soft skin, so um, maybe rough skin will work better. So let's just try that out. So that's better, right? Uh, scalp, actually, we could do some, uh, some dark stubble on my scalp. So that actually probably looks pretty good. Along, uh, as far as the head is concerned, that's probably a fairly good blend. I mean, we could spend more time with it, but that's probably okay. And, um, you know, hey, that's, we get a good likeness of me. Okay, so now it looks like we've got our head um, texture kind of matching our face, somewhat sort of kind of looks okay. Um, our next problem here is it looks like the body color looks like some weird tech uh, Ken doll looks completely fake and crappy. I don't understand why or what happened there. Um, we're using digital human skin. Yeah, I don't know the deal. I I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, this definitely seems like a, a glitch or a problem or a fault with headshot, but this is um, pretty crappy looking. I mean, it's fine if I'm wearing a t-shirt or something, but that's some seriously sh 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 uh, bad, I had to censor myself, some seriously bad uh, texture blending there. It looks like crap. Definitely not impressed. Uh, so the terrible blending notwithstanding, let's um, fix a few other things with our texture. So if we close the eyes of our thing, we see that they are not great. Um, I believe there is maybe a eyelid mask. So let's play with that and see what happens. Uh, the other thing we want to check is our mouth. So it looks like there is some a little bit weirdness there. I'm just going to open my jaw a little bit. And it looks like there is some scariness going on there. So we need to um, wrap our lips a little bit more. Uh, to fix this, we really don't want to mess with the... Um, the photo diffuse inside of headshot much because it's not going to do a very good job of projecting into the mouth anyway. Um, so now that we're kind of done with um, messing around with headshot, we're going to modify the flattened texture di directly. So I'm going to go right to the base map of the head here in the character. Now, mind you, if you make changes to this and then you go back into headshot and um, do anything where you're, you know, recreating or, you know, re reprojecting the the image again, it will overwrite your changes. So once you start messing with this, you have to decide that you're not going to play with the headshot stuff anymore. So I'm going to use the smart clone brush to just kind of fill in the ugliness here. Not going to spend a super lot of time messing with it. Um, feel free to do a better job uh, when you go to do your own. But for my purposes of this demonstration, I think this will be fine. Okay, and that sort of fixed it, but we're still getting some weirdness. And I believe that weirdness is due to the, um, the this normal map. See how there's like that craziness going on there in the normal map? So let's uh, try to fix that a little bit. Eh, good enough. 
So I was looking at myself in a mirror and I think my eyeball scale is actually bigger than this. So I'm just going to scale this up a bit. Cool. There I am, everybody. So let's put some clothes on me. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. In a little bit of time, we've created ourselves a digital double, which is pretty cool, pretty scary, pretty weird. Um, I actually think it turned out pretty good. Uh, once you cover up the body with uh, some clothing, you really can't see that the janky um, texture differences. And uh, our blending on our head actually ended up working out pretty good. So I think this turned out nice. Uh, it definitely wasn't a one-click solution, but it did work, which is pretty amazing. So you will have to spend some time with it. You have and, uh, you know, massage it. But you can get good results out of the new Headshot 2.0 plugin. So I think it's worthwhile, especially right now for $99. It's, you know, 50% off for um, current Realusion uh, users, I believe, uh, for current uh, character creator users. So I would grab it up now, I think, while it's on sale. Um, I think professionally, maybe my um, R3DS wrap and Substance Painter workflow is probably a bit preferred over this. But for the money, this is quite good and uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I do think they have to work on the blending between uh, the captured textures and the generated textures uh, quite a bit. But apart from that, this is a pretty cool little plug-in and, um, and I think it's worth it. So anyway guys, thanks a lot for sticking with me through the video. I hope you enjoyed yourself and perhaps even learned something and I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers. If you liked this video, then maybe you could support the channel on Patreon. That would be really cool. That's it. Thank you.